transition from amateur into professional was definitely wasn't smooth. Um, a big steep learning curve, and unfortunately, I was in the middle of that learning curve. And thankfully, you know, I came out the right side of it at the end. I think uh, playing with somebody you know very well, uh, you know, trust is a very important thing in rugby. Um, I know Brian very well. We've played against each other in school, um, played Leinster A together when we were kids, and played together for a very, very long time with Ireland. It's been really enjoyable. Um, obviously, he's a, a top quality player, probably one of the best uh, 13s that's ever played the game. I've definitely enjoyed the, uh, the time playing there with him. In any team, there's, uh, there's always transition every year. You know, we've had players that come, have, that come and go, and big names and smaller names. As a team in sport, you have to adjust and you have to, you have to get on. It's never going to be the same group of guys for, you know, more than a couple of years if you're lucky. Um, and we had that, and we had great success with it. And then the challenge changes, and the challenge uh, becomes winning with a new group of guys. I think Joe obviously brought a new level of uh, coaching that uh, a lot of guys probably hadn't uh, experienced before and I think that challenge that he put down to players um, to perform and I suppose that threat of not performing, uh, meaning you weren't going to be involved, brought the best out of players. He's a big believer in uh, high standards and executing the basics exceptionally well. It is a ball, says the referee, now where is the ball? It's Ireland's ball! It's Ireland's day! And the fairy tale season for Joe Schmidt, Brian O'Driscoll, and his Irish squad has come true. The worst part of it going out in the Heineken is, you know, it's gone for another year and that that knockout tournament, you know, when you get to the knockout stages, you know, you're, you're in the mix, you're in the last couple of teams and anything can happen. You look at the game as probably as objectively as you can and we kind of thought we left a few opportunities out there and, you know, that might have been due to Toulon's pressure or, you know, our inaccuracies, but, you know, we still had opportunities and not taking them, you know, it could have been a very different game. I think there is a small positive in it. There's a lot of young guys who haven't had um, a lot of Heineken Cup uh, defeat uh, experience, and I, you know, it was a very, very humbling experience getting on the plane back from Toulon. So I think those guys will grow from that and develop as players. The Rabo is always, uh, you know, one of our main driving focuses. It's the first thing that goes up on the uh, the board every preseason that we want to win the Rabo, and you know we're in a unique uh, position here that we got the hopefully we can be one of the first teams, well the first team to win it back to back. It's not an easy tournament. Again, um, as we've seen with the Heineken, you want to be getting that home uh, home semi and home final. Uh, so it's a huge amount to play for. Top four is tighter than it's ever been. Um, and you know we're 15, 16 months out from a World Cup. Um, it's a big ambition of mine to go to that. I still love it. You know, it's pretty easy on a day like this to say you really, really enjoy it. But I, I do. I love it. I love the, uh, love the camaraderie. I love the uh, the fun we have in behind closed doors uh, in the Leinster stuff that no one else sees. I love training, and most of all, I still love playing games, that competition, and pitting myself against uh, the world's best. Yeah, 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 yeah.